I was just sitting on my couch, watching some random show on TV that I wasn't even paying attention to. You know how it is, sometimes you just have something on for background noise. It was one of those nights. My phone was on the coffee table in front of me, and I was kind of zoned out, thinking about nothing in particular. Then my phone buzzed. It was one of those tiny vibrations that snap you out of whatever daze you're in. I reached over, grabbed it, and saw a message. Now this is where things got weird. I blinked a few times because I thought my eyes were playing tricks on me. The message was from my friend Lily. She was my best friend growing up. We did everything together, from skipping class to just driving around aimlessly. She always had that smile on her face like she was up to something. But Lily, well, she died three years ago. Car accident. It was a whole thing. So yeah, seeing her name pop up on my phone screen made my heart skip a beat. I stared at the message for a long time trying to make sense of it. It just said, I'm coming over. That's it. Three simple words that hit me like a brick to the chest. I sat there staring at my phone, my mind spinning. I mean, how? How could this even be possible? She was gone, and there was no way she could be sending me a text message, let alone telling me she was coming over. I shook my head and laughed nervously to myself, thinking, okay, maybe it's a prank or something. Someone got hold of her phone number and decided to mess with me. But here's the thing. I had her number deleted after she passed. Not right away, of course. I couldn't bring myself to delete it for months, but eventually I did. I deleted her number because it felt like moving on, like part of the process. So how was I seeing her name pop up now? I texted back, Who is this? This isn't funny. I set my phone down and tried to calm down. It was probably just some sick joke, right? Someone had to be playing with me. There was no other explanation. But something about the whole thing felt off, and I couldn't get rid of this weird feeling in my gut. The phone buzzed again. I reached for it, my heart pounding in my chest. It was another message from Lily. I'm almost there. Almost there? What the hell was that supposed to mean? My hand started shaking. I hadn't felt like this in a long time, not since... Well, not since I heard the news about her accident. I stood up feeling uneasy like something was about to happen. I walked to the window and looked outside. The street was quiet, like it usually was at this time of night. There was no one outside, no car, no sign of anyone approaching, just stillness. I paced around the room for a bit, trying to figure out what was going on. Maybe I was overthinking it. Maybe there was a glitch, or maybe... I don't know. My mind was spinning with possibilities, none of them good. And then the phone buzzed again. This time I didn't want to check it. I felt this overwhelming dread building up inside me. But I couldn't stop myself. I grabbed the phone and glanced at the message. I'm here. I froze. I'm here? What the hell was that supposed to mean? I hadn't heard a knock at the door, no sound of anyone pulling up in the driveway. Nothing. Just those two words. I'm here. I walked slowly to the door, my legs feeling like lead. I didn't know what I was expecting. Maybe some prankster waiting to jump out at me, or maybe... I don't even know. I just knew something wasn't right. I stood in front of the door for a moment, staring at it. My heart was pounding so hard I thought it might burst out of my chest. I took a deep breath, reached out for the doorknob, and twisted it. The door creaked open. There was no one there. I stepped outside, looking around. The street was still empty. The air felt heavy, like something was watching me. But there was no one in sight. Just the cool breeze and the dark night sky. I backed up, closed the door, and locked it. Something was seriously wrong. I could feel it in my bones. I checked my phone again, hoping there was some kind of explanation in the messages. But there wasn't. Just that final text. I'm here. 
I didn't know what to do. Part of me wanted to scream. Another part wanted to curl up and pretend this wasn't happening, but before I could make a decision, the lights flickered. Now I know what you're thinking. It's a classic horror movie trope, right? The lights always flicker when something creepy's about to go down. But I swear to you, this was different. It wasn't just the lights. It was like the whole house shifted just for a second, like something was in here with me. And then I heard it, a soft knock. It was coming from the back door. A knock, a soft, barely audible knock. Like someone tapping their fingers against the door just to let me know they were there. My whole body went cold. I didn't want to move, didn't want to go back there. My mind was spinning and every instinct I had was screaming at me to just stay put, but I couldn't help it. It was like my feet had a mind of their own. I slowly walked through the living room toward the kitchen where the back door was. Every step I took felt heavier than the last. My brain kept screaming at me, don't do it, don't open that door. But my hands were shaking and I knew I was going to open it. I reached the kitchen and everything was still, eerily quiet. The air felt thicker back there, like the space around me was closing in. I stood in front of the back door, heart pounding in my chest, and just stared at it. There was nothing. No more knocking, just silence. But the silence was worse. It was like something was holding its breath, waiting for me. I reached out, fingers trembling, and grabbed the doorknob. For a split second, I thought about running, about just grabbing my keys and getting the hell out of there. But I didn't. I turned the knob and slowly opened the door. There was no one there. I blinked, staring into the backyard, lit only by the dim glow of the streetlight shining through the trees. Everything was still, just like the front. The cool air hit my face, and for a second I thought maybe it was all in my head. Maybe I was imagining things. Maybe I was just tired. You know how your mind plays tricks on you sometimes? But then I saw it. At the edge of the yard, standing just under the shadow of the tree, was a figure. I couldn't make out the details at first. It was too far away. But the moment I spotted it, my heart dropped into my stomach. The figure stood completely still, like a statue. I squinted, trying to see better, but the shadows were thick, making it hard to tell who or what it was. I stepped back into the house, feeling that cold dread crawl up my spine. I should have shut the door. I should have just locked it and called someone, but I couldn't move. My hands were shaking so bad, and my throat felt tight like I couldn't breathe. And then, the figure moved. It took one slow, deliberate step forward, coming into the light just enough for me to see what, or rather who it was. It was Lily. I froze. It was impossible. It couldn't be. But there she was, standing at the edge of my yard, just staring at me. Her face was pale, too pale, like she hadn't seen sunlight in years. Her hair was stringy, hanging over her face, but I could still see her eyes. Those eyes, they didn't look like hers. They were hollow, like there was nothing behind them. No life, just emptiness. I wanted to scream, but nothing came out. I wanted to run, but my feet wouldn't move. I just stood there, locked in place, staring at her. She took another step forward, and that's when I saw it. Her clothes. They were the same clothes she'd been wearing the day of the accident. Torn, dirty, with patches of dried blood on them. I felt like I was going to throw up. Lily? I whispered, my voice barely audible. She didn't respond. She just stood there staring at me with those dead eyes, like she was waiting for something. I don't know what came over me, but I slammed the door shut and locked it, my heart racing. I backed away from the door, my mind spinning, trying to make sense of what I'd just seen. That wasn't her. It couldn't be. Lily was gone. I knew that. I went to her funeral. I saw her parents cry, saw her lowered into the ground. This wasn't real. It couldn't be. I grabbed my phone again, my hands shaking so bad I could barely hold it. I looked at the messages. 
they were still there, plain as day. I'm coming over. I'm almost there. I'm here. I stumbled into the living room trying to calm down, but my breathing was out of control. I kept telling myself it was some kind of hallucination, or maybe a nightmare that I hadn't woken up from yet. But the more I tried to convince myself, the more real it all felt. And then the phone buzzed again. I jumped, nearly dropping it. I didn't want to look, but I had to. I unlocked it and saw another message from Lily. Let me in. I felt the blood drain from my face. My hands went cold. I could hear my heartbeat in my ears pounding so hard I thought they might burst. I stared at the message, my mind spinning. I didn't reply. I couldn't. What was I supposed to say? This was insane. Another buzz. Let me in. I shook my head, backing away from the phone like it was something poisonous. My whole body was shaking now. I turned off the phone, trying to block it all out, but I couldn't. Another knock. But this time it wasn't soft. It was loud, aggressive, like someone was pounding on the door. I jumped, my heart nearly stopping in my chest. The knocking continued harder and harder, each thud vibrating through the house. I backed up into the wall, covering my ears, trying to block out the sound, but it just kept going. Then it stopped. Silence. I slowly uncovered my ears and opened my eyes. Everything was still. The knocking was gone. I let out a shaky breath, trying to calm down. Maybe it was all in my head. Maybe... Then I heard it. A creak. The back door, the one I had just locked, started to open, but it wasn't fast or sudden. No. It was slow, painfully slow, like someone was pushing it with just the slightest pressure, almost as if they were teasing me, making me wait for what was coming next. The creaking sound dragged out, filling the room. Every inch it moved made the hairs on the back of my neck stand up. My heart dropped into my stomach as I watched the door slowly, so slowly, swing open, inch by inch. I didn't want to look, but I couldn't tear my eyes away from it. The darkness outside seemed to seep into the room, swallowing up the light. I could barely make out the yard beyond it, but there was enough light from the street lamps to show me. No one was there. At least, I didn't think there was. I felt frozen like my body refused to respond. Every muscle in me was locked in place, like my brain was screaming, move, close the door, get out. But my legs just wouldn't listen. Then, as the door opened fully, the creaking finally stopped, leaving behind an awful silence that was somehow worse. I stood there, staring at the open doorway, half expecting something, anything, to step through, but nothing did. For a second, I thought maybe the wind had pushed it open. You know how sometimes doors just don't latch all the way? Maybe that's all it was. But deep down, I knew better. I knew that door had been locked. I knew I'd heard the click of the lock when I shut it. There was no way it had just opened on its own. I swallowed hard, my throat dry, and took one shaky step forward toward the door. I don't know why. Maybe I was just trying to convince myself that nothing was wrong. Maybe if I closed it again I could pretend like this was all some weird dream I was about to wake up from. But then, I saw it. Right in the doorway, just at the edge where the light met the dark, there was a shadow. At first I thought maybe it was just a trick of the light. But the more I looked, the more I realized it was moving. A figure standing just inside the doorway, barely visible in the shadows. I blinked, trying to focus to make sure I wasn't just imagining things, but no. It was real. Someone, or something, was standing there watching me. My heart was pounding so hard I could feel it in my throat. I took another step back, my legs finally listening to my brain, but the figure didn't move. It just stood there, completely still. I squinted, trying to make out more details, but it was too dark. Then it moved, just a tiny step forward, enough for the light from the street lamp to catch part of its face, and when it did, I swear my blood turned to ice. 
It was Lily. Or at least, it looked like Lily. But not the way she looked when she was alive. This version of her. She was pale, so pale it was like all the blood had been drained from her face. Her eyes were sunken, dark circles surrounding them, and her hair was a matted mess hanging limply around her shoulders. But what really got me were her eyes. They weren't Lily's eyes. They were empty, cold. There was nothing behind them. No life, no warmth, just darkness. I wanted to scream, but my throat felt tight like something was squeezing it. I couldn't breathe, couldn't think, couldn't move. All I could do was stare at her. Standing there in the doorway, her head tilted slightly as if she was waiting for me to say something. L lily I finally managed to choke out, my voice barely a whisper. She didn't respond. She just stood there, staring at me with those hollow eyes, not blinking, not moving. I took another step back, my hands shaking so bad I thought I might drop my phone. This wasn't real. It couldn't be real. I'd gone to her funeral. I'd watched her get lowered into the ground. I knew she was gone. And yet, here she was. Another step. She moved forward again, just a little, but enough to send my heart racing even faster. I could feel the cold sweat on my forehead dripping down the back of my neck. My whole body was shaking now. I wanted to run, but my legs felt like they were glued to the floor. Lily, I said again, louder this time, but my voice was trembling. Y you're you're not real. She still didn't say anything. She just stared at me, her face completely expressionless, but her eyes... Her eyes were boring into me like they could see straight through me, like they knew everything about me. I swallowed hard, my mouth dry. This isn't happening, I whispered to myself. This can't be happening. But it was. She took another step and I backed up again, almost tripping over the couch as I did. My hands were shaking so bad now I could barely hold on to my phone. The door was wide open behind her, the night air creeping into the house, bringing with it a cold that felt unnatural, like it was coming from her, like the warmth of the world was being sucked away the closer she got. I don't know why I did it, but I turned and ran. I bolted for the front door, my heart pounding in my chest, my breaths coming in short, panicked gasps. I grabbed the doorknob, fumbling with it, but my hands were so slick with sweat I could barely grip it. Finally, I got the door open. I quickly grabbed my keys hanging next to the doorway and stumbled outside, slamming it shut behind me. I stood on the porch, gasping for air, my heart pounding so loud it was all I could hear. I didn't dare look back at the house. I knew she was still in there, waiting, watching. My mind was spinning, and my body felt like it was about to give out from the sheer terror. But I couldn't just stand there. Without thinking, I bolted for my car, fumbling with my keys as I ran. My hands were shaking so badly I almost dropped them, but I managed to unlock the door and fling it open. I threw myself inside, slamming the door shut behind me. My hands were shaking as I jammed the key into the ignition, and after a few nerve-wracking seconds of struggling, the car finally roared to life. I peeled out of the driveway so fast I thought I'd blow out a tire. My foot was glued to the gas pedal as I sped down the road, not even sure where I was going at first. My mind was a mess still replaying the image of Lily standing in the doorway, her cold, dead eyes staring at me. I didn't care about the speed limit. I didn't care about anything except getting as far away from that house as possible. Every shadow on the road made me jump. Every car I passed felt like it was watching me. But I didn't stop. I couldn't stop. I had to get away. And then it hit me. I knew exactly where I needed to go. My parents' house. I hadn't been there in weeks because I had been so busy, but right now it was the only place I felt like I'd be safe. 
I don't even know why. Maybe it was just instinct. Maybe it was the need to be near family. I didn't know, but I knew I had to get there. The drive felt like it took forever. Every minute stretched out longer than the last. I kept glancing at my rearview mirror, half expecting to see Lily sitting in the back seat, her empty eyes boring into me. But every time I looked, the back seat was empty. Still, I couldn't get rid of the feeling that she was following me, that she was waiting for me to let my guard down. Finally, after what felt like an eternity, I pulled into my parents' driveway. I barely remember getting out of the car and stumbling to the front door. I must have looked like a mess because the moment my mom opened the door, her face went pale. What happened? She asked, her voice full of concern as she helped me inside. I couldn't even get the words out at first. I was shaking so bad my teeth were chattering. My dad came over, his face full of worry, and they both sat me down on the couch. L lily I finally stammered. She... she was at my house. My mom's face changed when I explained the whole story. I tried to also show them the texts, but it seemed to just disappear. She exchanged a look with my dad and he nodded, his expression grim. We need to call someone, my mom said, her voice steady but serious. Right now. I didn't understand what was going on. I was too rattled to think straight. But the next thing I knew, my parents were on the phone with some old family friend, someone I'd only met a couple of times when I was a kid. He was a shaman, and I remember my parents talking about him whenever they dealt with spiritual stuff. A couple of hours later, the shaman arrived. He was this old man, hunched over with age, but his eyes were sharp. And there was this air about him that made me feel like he knew things, things I couldn't even begin to understand. He didn't waste any time. He went straight to work, pulling out all sorts of strange items. He started chanting in a language I didn't recognize, his voice low and rhythmic, and the whole room felt like it was vibrating with energy. At first, I didn't know what to think. Part of me wanted to believe that this was all just some kind of nightmare, that none of it was real. But as the ritual went on, I started to feel something shift. It was like the air around me was getting lighter. The weight of fear that had been crushing me started to lift. The shaman stopped chanting after what felt like hours, and he turned to me, his eyes serious. You need to change your name, he said. I blinked, confused. What? He explained that an evil spirit had took the form of Lily and had latched on to me, that she knew me by my name, and as long as I kept that name, she would keep coming for me. The only way to sever the connection was to change my name, to make her lose her grip on me. I didn't want to believe it. It sounded insane, but after everything I had seen that night, I wasn't about to argue. So, with my parents and the shaman as witnesses, I did it. I changed my name. It wasn't legal or anything, just a spiritual thing, but it felt real. It felt like something had shifted, like a door had been closed. After the ritual, the shaman told me that I'd be safe as long as I never used my old name again. He warned me that the evil spirit might try to find me, but as long as I didn't answer to that name, she couldn't touch me. It was a lot to take in. I felt like my whole world had been turned upside down, but for the first time that night I felt a little bit of hope. Maybe, just maybe, I could finally be free of her. My parents let me stay with them that night. I didn't want to go back to my house, not yet. I needed time to process everything, to figure out what the hell had just happened. The next morning I woke up feeling exhausted like I hadn't slept at all. But there was a strange sense of calm that I hadn't felt in a long time. I knew I wasn't out of the woods yet, but I felt like I had a fighting chance now. I haven't gone back to my house yet. I'm not sure if I ever will. Part of me is still terrified that she'll find me again. 
that she'll show up at my door calling me by my old name. But as long as I keep my distance, as long as I keep this new name, I think I might be okay. At least, I hope so. That's the end of this video. If you like my stories, feel free to subscribe to me for more to come. See you next time and be safe.